Hey y'all, um, I wanted to make my Grand Blue Fantasy video finally. So this is um, Grand Blue Fantasy, a game I talked about a lot on streams and on my social media and stuff. Um, but if you don't follow me, maybe you're coming here for the first time uh, and somehow also don't know what Grand Blue Fantasy is. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy is a JRPG mobile gotcha game. Gotcha games being uh, games where you gamble for content. So, I want to show off, like, my collection of characters, talk a little bit about how I feel about the game, and talk about um, things that matter to me and stuff like that. So, I think I'll start out with characters, because that is uh, one of the most important elements of a gotcha game, generally speaking. So, um, this game has a bit of LGBT representation. So, this is Vera, who is a lesbian. Um, it's uh, in the story text. It's in her dialogue. It is literally one of, it's one of her defining characteristics, which generally speaking is not good but she has other qualities she she is like a yandari type of character and that's like oh but like she's not really done violent acts outside of like situations in which it can be explained away um and her outfit when she's merged is not the best um and that's a recurring theme and the design of female characters in this game um they have designs like this um, which is fine for one or two characters, but maybe not for all of the characters in the game, and it tends to be a lot of that, like, um, even people who have good costumes might get a, a second version with a tummy showing for no reason. Um, so this is, uh, Vera's, uh, girlfriend, Catalina, um, long time, school crushes, reunited, fall in love, blah blah blah, very cute. Um, it's not, like, 100% canon because these games are designed for you to be able to fuck everyone. Um, there's another version of Vera. Here's her in a, just a dress. It's pretty, it's cute. Um, and so this game uh, has a lot of really good features that I think a lot of other gotchas can learn from, and a lot of features that could be improved. Um, like the LGBT representation. Um, this is Cagliostro. Um, so, like, like, we have canon lesbian Vera. Here's a canon lesbian, uh, I mean, a canon trans character, Cagliostro. She is an alchemist who made her own body, um, and self-defined herself. She has a support with a different trans character that, like, lets, that she, like, offers to make her a new body, but she is, like, oh, I don't want to change anything about my body. I don't have dysphoria from it. I am happy to be a girl. Again, like, your mileage may vary from the quality of the representation, but it definitely, it 100% exists. Um, this character has a lot of gay energy, um, for instance, but, like, that one is less canon. Uh, there's this uh, Yule here, who makes a commitment to her friend, and all of this, very gay, and look at that art, I mean, that was fucking gay. So there's a lot of, like, canon gay representation and then, like, less um, canon stuff. But, I mean, there's definitely some very good, um, cool girl designs. Like, the, this girl and Bridget, is a different character, have, like, some canon stuff. And obviously you see her, she's holding a girl. Her whole thing is, like, girls are super into her. Now, they're into her because think, she thinks she's, like, a pretty boy or whatever. But, like... That's like an archetype. We see that in like Sailor Moon and a lot of other things. And I like a girl prince lesbian. So you have all these characters and I think they're fairly, uh, you know, sometimes there's some hit and miss writing, but generally speaking, when you're in their individual supports, like you get a loving and understanding view of them with maybe some snide comments from the shitty dragon boy that's in your party, um, who I hate, Vern. Um, the narrative of the game is fairly good for uh, a gotcha game, uh, but it's not, it's not like Shakespeare or anything. Uh, pff, not that Shakespeare's that good. It's not, it's just, not, it's not a classic work of literature, um, I, I would say, but I do think f for a lot of JRPGs in general, it does a story that has a lot of queer representation, even if it's not all good, and there's characters that are definitely... Uh, could definitely be better um, handled and a lot of like reasons that if someone's the villain for this arc is because they were very gay and mad about something that happened to girl like Vera who I mentioned earlier is an arc villain because she's obsessed with Catalina blah 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 in the end they make up everything is fine 
Um, and there's like an empress kind of girl who's mad because some angel boy fucked the girl that she really likes. Um, and an arc villain. And oh gosh, is there anyone else that's um, evil because they're gay? Oh yeah, then uh, there's uh, a knight that is like real mean because her girlfriend got turned into a doll person. So, um, yeah, not exactly the uh, most nuanced and great representation, uh, but gameplay wise, uh, but it, like, but it's still, it's still canon queer representation. And to me that like means a lot and that goes a long way, like in me being able to go like, yeah, but at least they're gay and they're playable. That That's like another like big thing in, in these kind of games. You, you might have like gay evil characters that never are ever playable and then that like becomes its own issue because when you're like making these kind of characters you're not like um you're not giving them like the love and the care that they deserve and that is fucked up but when you can make these characters and they're playable that means you're going like you acknowledge that people will find kinship with these characters and these things which is why I don't have problems with characters like Tharja, even if they, like, in Fire Emblem, who might also fit into, like, kind of negative, problematic stereotypes. I would say that because it's the only LGBT representation, it makes it worse. But in, like, this game, there's a lot of characters and there's a lot of um, LGBT representation. And I think that's the most important part of the game for me. That's what really got me to come and play it. And the biggest selling point for me, because I, I just played during an event. And I would recommend, if you join the game, join during an event that they're giving a lot of free characters because the game is pretty stingy when it comes to things and you might get some cool like rare characters like uh, this trans boy he's really great but the game also misgenders him but like has him in his story affirming his identity and getting acceptance but then like mechanically it puts an f on this character but for the trans girl i showed earlier it puts an f on her and I don't know if it's, like, some weird trans med shit or, or, or what, but, um, like, y you're, you're not gonna have, like, you, like, you get some, like, cool characters, but they're not as strong. It's just the way that these kind of games work. So what you want to do is go and summon, and you summon, uh, and you have a fairly low rate. So if I click here on the draw rates, this is a normal banner. People only really summon on the increased rate banners when they know what they're doing. But you see 3% chance of getting a rare person when you do a 10 summon. 97% chance of getting an SR. And SRs are basically nothing to me. Like, they can be good. They, there's a few that are good. There's some really cool characters that are SRs that I want. Um, but for the most part, they're kind of just the, the, gar the garbage. It's because they're not the lowest tier character. And they're not the highest tier character. So they don't really fit... <laughs> Like, any specific kind of... Oh, gosh. Sorry. Excuse me. They don't fit any kind of specific, like, like niche. Like, later, later, later in the game. There'll be situations that only let you use SRs or Rs. And then, even later in the game, only Rs. So, eventually, really just having strong Rs... It's what matters the most. Some SRs are good. Especially when you're starting the game. Um, what a shock. But, like, getting the rarest characters is going to be very hard for you. And, um, yeah. So, the, in terms of the summoning in this game, not that great. There is a lot of free characters in the game. To get free being, you know, in quotations, it takes your time and energy. And that is, like, exactly what these games want. So, like... Here on these pages, there is uh, 9, 18, uh, 27, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 36-ish 36 free characters here. I could be off by one or two. Um, most of these give a free character, and a couple of these give more than one free character. 
and there's about to be a new side story that has three new SSR free characters, which are the high, which is the highest rarity in the game. So, like, there's a lot of opportunities, but you unlock these over the story, and you also unlock a couple of SR characters during the story, but where you really need to handle the high-level content is SSR characters. So you're really going to want to wait until you can get SSR characters, accrue a collection of them, and that's what I suggest. Um, coming and joining the game around that time and like getting free roles at the gotcha. And then after that, um, you can go ahead and use the sparking system, which is what people do. Um, and you have to save 300 summons, which is why I say the summons are very slow in this game. Um, to get like one of the select featured characters, you have to summon 300 times. Then you can get any one of like here, it would for this banner, it would be these. Um, five characters I could get a copy of guaranteed but like what I really want is to get like I, I have some goals in mind so I'm sitting here I'm grinding 300 summons and you can see like this is 10 summons this is like 98 summons and this is like 91 summons not not 300 and I've saved up for like two months now um and you could say that's like not that slow for a gotcha game. I don't know. I want to be summoning once a month, ideally. Um, uh, like that's how I feel. Like I feel like I should feel the temptation to grab a new character at least once a month in a gotcha game. Maybe two months, but like it's going to roll over into three months. Um, for sure, if I can even get there. I don't have that much more resources I can even grind out to to get new things right now so i'm kind of stuck with events and stuff like that to get my resources so uh, i didn't spend the most wisely at the beginning of the game but i don't regret it because i needed those ssr characters to handle the content so let's talk about a little bit about the mechanics here in the game um so the way that this game works is there's elements so you have dark light fire water earth wind and you want to make teams that consist of one basic element generally, um, but that's not a big concern at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, you can use a team that composed of uh, as many elements as you want. But like later game, you'll want to be investing in single element teams because there's bosses that only are affected by a certain element, um, uh, like or they're affected by other elements, but they're only affected like 0.25 percent or something, and that's just not going to cut it. And the harder content. Um, so you will eventually need to build out elements. Wind is probably the easiest element to build um, for folks because there's going to be another free to play one, and there's a couple of ones you can get as free to play players without ever having to spend any in game money. Um, and then there's a weapon system, and those are also part of a gotcha and require multiple copies of a character and stuff like that to get. or, or and um, then there's summons, which also require multiple summons of a character to max out. And the weapons in the summons boost your stats and add passive effect or passive stra stra um, strength growth stuff into your character. So, like, if I click on this character, she gets boost to human attack from a weapon, big boost to damage, uh, dark allies attack plus eight, damage uh, allies boost to attack upon taking uh, damage stackable, Big boost to saber ability attacks and uh, max HP. So she gets all those boosts from the weapons and then the summon gives a passive boost of however many uh, attack. So that's how that works. And the characters can be maxed out without um, having to summon multiple versions of a character. Um, They're just uh, maxed out using resources. So if I click on cap here, uh, you can see how to um, how you'll like the highest level of uh, pulling a character out. Oh, I don't need a loading screen right now. Thank you. So like this is like what the high level uncap looks like, which isn't a lot. Sometimes there's more resources. I don't think this character has the money because she's like an early game character. Um, she's one of the SSRs that you're most likely to get because um, there's a rotation of like five characters that you get in your free first summon that they give you. So, um, 
Yeah, so you'll need the resources. Uh, I these are actually very hard to grind, um, but I'm I've just played the game a lot, and I don't I only invest into girls, and even that, like if you're looking at my inventory, you can see that I didn't uncap everyone, and I really should be uncapping more, including that character, since I'm using her in my main team, and it'd be better for my team to have that. And then there is the party, the uh, class system, which is for your own character, and um, you'll get a like set of stats from a certain class that will apply to you, and you'll get like um, ongoing bonus stats from every class you've mastered. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of classes. Most of them have bad women armor designs when you're playing as a girl in this game, which is really weird because. There's clearly some things in this game that are intended for women. It's not even like this is an option that they think cis men might enjoy. Um, but in fact, it is like something that they in intend women to be. And they have a high female player base. They have done surveys. And it's like 46% female. But for some reason, they're not like putting in the work to make designs that respect women uh, for your own character. <laughs> Which is really weird, and I don't get it. <laughs> because, like, freaking Pretty Cure and Card Capture Sakura have crossovers in this game. Or had events. Uh, hopefully they'll rerun, because I want to play them again. That's another thing that sucks. There's a lot of limited time only characters, and if you didn't get them... Well, hopefully they'll rerun the event. If they don't, you'll never have that character. Um, and it's not even, like, a seasonal character, like Fire Emblem Heroes or something. That's like, oh, well, when winter comes around, I know that I'll have a chance to get winter erica or whatever like it's just not the same now um i'll show a little bit of combat like i showed a little tiny bit earlier but it was jumping into a raid i'll see if i can jump into it a different raid again because that's the resource i have a lot of right now and um i'll just pop into this i'm not really that strong for these kind of things but um i'd pick a passive effect to boost so i would just pick like i don't know I'll pick the bonus XP one because I'm not trying to be strong. I'm just going to use my uh, random element grinding team um, because I'm a bad friend. So you have your summons that you can summon in battle, so they also have a bonus effect. Normally only your main weapon really matters, but this um, specific uh, class can switch between your second weapon and, and to switch to do different effects and stuff, so that's an interesting little mechanic they have. Um... And then you have skills, so you saw me, I went through a skill rotation, which is what you'll do um, commonly, and sometimes you'll think harder th than that. Um, so you can click and, or I can click here and be like, can't catch me, dodge bar. I have that stuff turned off, but, so you'll have little mechanics. You have the element, rock, paper, scissors, light and dark beat each other. Water beats fire, fire beats wind, wind beats earth, earth beats water. Um, and then you have a charge meter and that lets everyone do their ultimate attack so it is kind of just a very basic JRPG here there's a small, a small element system and three to four skills on each individual character a summon that you can use uh, based on cooldowns like your um, but those are based on turns specifically where your um, CA meter is based on a lot of factors. You can use skills to increase it. You can take uh, damage and increase it. You can attack and increase it. So there's a lot of ways to boost your CA, and there's lots of bonuses and stats. You can see there's a lot going on. Um, it really seems like a lot, but um, as you play the game, you start to get it by osmosis. Like I didn't really understand it, because the game is so easy when you start, because they just give you a bunch of stuff that just makes it really easy, and you should use it, because there's no reason to, to suffer through the beginning of the game. Like, you might as well just beat maps really easy, get the money, and be able to summon faster for the harder content instead of spending a month grinding out slower content. So I would say that, like, you definitely want to, um, like, you know, be thoughtful when you're using the uh, characters and, like, you know, know what you're fighting against. And um, that was a raid boss, so there was a bunch of other players in my game with me. Um, I can have private ones of that. Um, when I entered the battle, there was a thing that was like crew, um, friends, and then also like just public. 
So I can uh, decide by a few factors, um, like what is going to be in there. You can see like the top players of the map, the person who set it up, and then the top two. And that's just how you clear through that kind of content. Um, you can see my crew here. So like I, I have a crew that I'm the leader of. And we're cool lesbian, Sky Sappho, come and join. Um, and that is fun. So I really, really love the social element. That's what's really kept me in the game. Um, talking to my good friend Erica, who is just amazing. She's a really great friend. I'm at Silent Mages on Twitter. Shout out. Um, like, uh, I really, uh, you know, she's, she's, she's great. So... I am just like, uh, so the, the social element and fighting and social element in context is definitely the best part of it for me. You can run even in like co-op missions. So you would be able to go and play with your friends in a room and do a bunch of like boss fights that aren't the raid battle, which are, you know, run slightly different mechanically and um, are fairly, you know, fun, simple, it's easy mechanics. I definitely uh, enjoy this game. And I want to, I, I want it to like improve and be better. Um, I do think that the major flaws of the game are uh, female character design, um, inconsistent parts of its LGBT, re LGBT representation, um, a gambling system that really could use improvement. It costs like thirty-five dollars to get ten summons usually, or something like that. You know, give or take your your currency, but like. 30,000 MOBA coins is, is a lot. So, like, they really could have a much cheaper business model. It just wouldn't make them all of the money, and that's what these kind of games are about. Um, they invest a lot to make all of the fucking money in the world. Um, yeah, so I really do think that these games can do better, and I think this game can definitely do better. We're about to have a story event coming up in the game, but that's not really going to get us any extra free stuff. I would... Recommend checking it out. Um, you can do it right from your browser, which is super convenient. So, like, I'm using the default Android browser to play the game. Um, and you can use your um, Google Chrome on your PC, or you can use your phone browser um, to play the game online without having to download anything, which is amazing. It's so convenient. Um, since I have, you know, Wi-Fi on my phone and stuff, I can play the game when I have Wi-Fi, when it's available... And I don't have to worry about, like, like, like this game would have had online check DRM anyway, so you can only play it online even if you did download it. So you might as well just be playing it off a browser. Um, and, like, all these gotcha games. So I do highly recommend, uh, if you're a fan of JRPGs and gotchas, or if you're, like, wanting to try a mobile game, I definitely think this is the better one because the positives as opposed to the negatives. I think that the gameplay is solid. The story is above average, but not great. Um, the LGBT representation is better than average, not great. So, like, it's a lot of, like, lukewarm recommendation, but it is a game I honestly love, and I fell in love with characters like Vera and Cagliostro, and they've become, like, characters that I have headcanons about in ships, and that's not something that I have happened in a lot of media for me. Uh, maybe because it's loosely written and there's not a lot so that you fill in a lot with your head. I just, like, see that. And there's, like, strong brown women in this game, like, Zooey here. And, like, even if it's, uh, you know, not necessarily specific representation, having, like, dark-skinned women in a game is, like, such a cool, like, thing as a woman of color. Even if, you know, they're not, like, the most consistently written or whatever. Like, just being able to be, like, multiple different women of color... It's something I not experienced in, in any, like, game, I don't think. Like, there's not a lot of games that you can be like, oh, yeah, here's a bunch of women of color with different personalities, even if they're kind of generically women of color. And, uh, you know, minus, like, you know, obviously the, like, clearly, like, a lot of the cast would be Japanese in a lot of JRPG games. Um, but, like, seeing them with, like, clearly not designed for, uh, like, the white... Like, to, to be a white self-insert or, like, a, a general self-insert for people of all skin colors, um, which is generally how kind of anime designs fit. Like, they're trying to have a skin tone that generally 
more people will be like, yeah, I can see myself having that skin tone. Um, where, like, you can see, like, different skin tones that are darker. There's definitely, I, I can't think of many, like, black characters, like, that are, like, definitely black. But maybe I just haven't used them. Like, I'm looking through and I'm not really, like, that girl I showed was maybe the closest, but I think that she's just supposed to be, like, a dark tanned girl. But, yeah, so there's a couple of characters and lots of girls and some gay representation and lots of, like, little gay bits of things, like this angel boy that's definitely gay for Lucifer and stuff like that. So there's um, a lot of cool things in this game, and I really think that, on the whole, for gotcha games right now, it's my number one. Um, and it's, it's toppled every other game, and this is, like, the game that is my priority, and maybe that's just because of social element, but then other games should have a better social element. Um, that would be my, um, rebuttal. So, yeah, um, thank you all for watching. Uh, I will see you all later. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.